a man whose job it was to get inside Donald Trump's head and share his story with the world, says Trump is a failing real estate developer who had little idea what he was doing. Charlie Learson was Trump's ghostwriter for his 1990 book, Surviving at the Top. He worked with Trump during the years that the New York Times bombshell report showed Trump had over a billion dollars in losses. In a couple years, double the next biggest loser in America. It is a starkly different picture than the one painted in Surviving at the Top. So Charlie Learson uh, is out front. Okay, so, you know, Art of the Deal becomes this bestseller. Then he wants to do a sequel. And, and so he sits down with you. You right. write it. Um, as I said, you really get his voice. I, I encourage people to read it. It's, it's quite fascinating. He talks about wanting an open marriage and all kinds of things like that. Um, but let me, let me just ask you, during this time, uh, things are turning around for him very much to the south. Right. Um, we now see a billion dollars in losses. And now you feel like you need to speak up because obviously that's not what he said in the book. Well, I just thought it was interesting that, that it, it, from the story that the Times dug up the other day about the 10 years of income tax and you think of chaos and, and misery. But in the center of that was this quiet office where he was going through fabric swatches most, most of the day. Uh, and in, in the middle of all this sturm and drang, he was, he was oblivious to it. Uh, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't really paying a lot of attention to the Plaza Hotel and the, and the Trump shuttle and the other things he just invested in. So, so, you know, let me just show some examples because he wanted to use this as, as, as to, you know, portray the, I guess, I guess when you got in his head, did he believe the, the, uh, the spin that he was giving you? Well, as I say in, in the piece, he, he's he, the only thing I think he's above average at is compartmentalizing. So he was able to put all that bad stuff all the in, failure. in a box that he didn't think about during the day. And I think it only really bothered him when it became public. At this time, like things were really going to hell in, in, in his business, but, but the public didn't know about it yet. So he wasn't that concerned. Right. And then he wants to put this book out to, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm curious what word you'd use, okay? Because let's talk about a yacht. He bought yeah. a yacht. He calls it the Trump uh, princess in right. 1987, actually from a relative of Jamal Khashoggi, Adnan Khashoggi. He ultimately had to turn it over to lenders, right? right? Because he was so far in the hole that he lost the boat. Right. But in the book, he says, after a couple years, I started to think about an even bigger boat. And I actually had plans drawn for one. This is a classic example of how I keep trying to top myself. Owning the world's most magnificent yacht only made me want to get something bigger and better. But as much as I've enjoyed it until now, I don't need it anymore. And I don't want it anymore. Um, in that year, when it was taken from him, right. he had $42.2 million in business losses. This was not spinning. Right. This was just a blatant lie. Oh, yeah. And I can, I can still see myself at my kitchen table writing what you just read. You, know, you in, remember in his him voice. telling you this? Well, no, he didn't yeah. tell me that. We, we, yeah. we had a, each time, it, we had a whole book of braggadocious stuff all prepared. And then as we were, were ready to go to press... Forbes magazine and some other people came out with, with the news that he actually had a below zero net worth, that everything was going south. His wife, Ivana, left him at the time. Mike Tyson was his meal ticket in Atlantic City, got knocked out. Everything was going poorly. So we had to salvage the book. We had to come up with these lame explanations, meaning me and the editors. And, and to Trump try wasn't, to sell the whole he thing. wasn't really involved. In, Interesting. In he it. makes a point in here of saying, you know, he's the one who left Ivana. I mean, that that all is in right. there as it's happened contemporaneously. Trump shuttle. Uh, you got a picture in the, with the caption. The Trump shuttle is now the best airline of its kind anywhere. Um, he bought the shuttle for three hundred sixty five million dollars. It never made a profit. Lost no. 182 million dollars no. uh, that year on his business losses. So that was also BS. It, it was, and it, it, all of these deals were really stupid deals that he made for the Plaza Hotel, the Trump Shuttle. He simply paid too much for them, and he did the equivalent of like if you bought a house and only put ten dollars down, your mortgage would be astronomical, and you couldn't pay it every month. And that was the position okay. he was in. So, what was your impression of him? At the time, I thought he was a kind of a goofy, what we call in New York, a bridge and tunnel guy. He was from Queens. I was from the Bronx. So we got along. He, the stakes were lower. It didn't matter that much. He wasn't, he wasn't evil then. He wasn't mean. He wasn't going to separate uh, babies from their families. He was just a, like a, a middle-level real estate guy with aspirations. So I, I, didn't, I didn't think he was evil at the time, but I think he is now. 